We almost don't know this, though, unless we have put our faith in, in, in God, right? Like when we've gone into the fire, and it's like, yeah, no, I know this is to be true. And then we have stories. We have stories to tell. Like I shared a few with you that now they have stories to tell when God was faithful. Man, it's what we leave here and go and look for, right? It's like, man, I'm putting my faith in you as I leave this place into the world to now have a story to tell of your faithfulness. It's what people are drawn to, right? People are drawn to your story. People want to hear it. They do. We talked a little bit about that last week, right? We said, yeah, people around know that there's a Bible. But how has the Bible come alive in your life that you are able to share? When did you get in the fire and, it, and didn't get burned? When did you go to the edge of the sea? When did you say, I don't have the words to say, and God gave you the words to say? When were you faithful? Because that's what people want to know. They do. As we're closing today, I want to uh, share something with you. You can guys have a seat, okay? Because I know you're like, how long are we going to stand? I don't know what's going on here. Stand up, kneel down. What are we going to do? All right. So I want to I want to share something with you about baptism, okay? Baptism is coming very soon, and you're like, when is it coming? November 22nd. You're like, that's not soon. Like, what? How do we do baptism now? We have a really cool way that we do baptisms. More than just the videos. Okay, because it's cool to hear the stories, right, of those who are celebrating giving their life to Christ in a relationship. And I get this sometimes, like, well, my little kid, he's like, I want him to do this. And, and, and I'm like, that's beautiful. And I want to walk through that with your child. But some of us as adults don't have a story of our baptism, do we? Some of us maybe can't remember if it meant anything or not. I remember um, reading a verse, driving down the street after youth group one night, and it was Mark 16, 17, and 18. And man, it said, those who believe and are baptized will be saved, but those who do not believe will be condemned. And I remember going back to my youth pastor, and my youth pastor, uh, cool guy, Ricky High, and uh, I said, Ricky, I don't think I need to be baptized. And he's like, why, what are you talking about? I read a verse, right? We've done that. I read a verse that if I believe and am baptized, then I'll be saved. But if I don't believe, then I'll be condemned. Didn't say if I'm not baptized. So me and Ricky, of course, Ricky was just going to take me to the woodshed. And, uh, and he did. And his drop the mic moment was, he said, do you remember the time when Jesus was baptized? And I was like, oh, he just said that. And he said, when I say that to you, what does it mean? And I remember I went and read the story. And what does it say? It says the clouds opened up. And God himself said, this is my son to whom I am well pleased. And I'm wondering, well, what, he, why? Why was he so pleased? Well, he was, he was, of course, pleased by his bravery. I mean, all of the things that we're, as adults, scared to do. Like, I've got to go stand up in front of people and, and, and be baptized, right? No. But wasn't he pleased with Christ for proclaiming to the world who the Father was? Who the leader of his life was? Who the authority of his life was? And man, that's what we do here. It's an opportunity for you to come forward and say, you know what, I've never done that in my life. Young or old, I've never known who the authority is in my life, and I've never been baptized under that name. Where my life is new and all things are washed away that are corrupt. So for you, um, if that's you today and you're like, man, I, I don't think I've ever experienced it that way. Maybe it was religious to you. 
Maybe your parents were like, no, you're going to get baptized because all the family's coming or whatever. I don't know. Maybe something happened. And, and it really wasn't the experience that you'd hoped it would be. Well, we have opportunity coming up. And we have a new thing that we're doing, which I'm excited about. And some of you maybe who have baptized last time kind of went through this. And it is an opportunity for you to really grab hold on what baptism means in your life. And we want to walk through that with you. So it's, uh, it's not one of those things where we're going to say, okay, sign up, and then you show up on, a, on a, this Sunday, and then it just happens. We give you a really cool robe, says SEC on it, and it's really neat. But we want to walk through the actual discipleship process with you. Um, we want you to understand what we believe scripturally it means for your life and what it means moving forward. Because we want real change to happen. Like, is it baptism? Move us to real change, right? Real change. And so we want to see that for you, and we want to walk with you through that. Joel and Nikki and our staff, man, came together and created a process that we believe is doing that and going to do that, okay? And so what that looks like for you is that if you're like, oh, you know what, I've never been baptized, or, you know, I don't remember what that was, and even if you do remember it, it was like, uh, I, I don't think that was me at that moment, and I'm in a whole new place. And I want to move forward in, in power. There's an opportunity to do that. And here's what you do. It's real simple. You, um, you text this number back behind me. Um, and we start a really cool process over the next few weeks. Okay? And it doesn't even actually take long. It doesn't take a few weeks. It just, for some people, are just slow. So it takes longer. It's like a month. It's like, I'll get back to it. I'm like, no, no, no. It doesn't have to take that long. It could be a week. It could be a week. But we believe it'll prepare you when you come up and get in the water that you know that you know that you know that you're proclaiming the name of Christ. And it won't just be, again, it won't just be a, a, a part of a service or a religious experience. It will be something that will move you and thrust you forward in your faith forever. So if that is you, and maybe it's your young one, maybe, and, and we're going to go through the same process with him. There's not a, we don't have a, a, a young process and then an old, I mean, no, it's the same process we're going to do. And, and it just helps us and helps you understand and be prepared. Okay. So again, all you do is text that number if you are interested in starting that conversation and uh, we'll do that immediately. And it's super, super awesome. Okay. I wanted to make one more announcement just to let you know before we take off, um, that there's something cool coming up on October 25th, right? Um, I know that's not on the screen, but I want to tell you, just so you can start telling your families and friends, October 25th is our last KBC of the year here at SEC, and we're kind of doing it, going out with a really cool party, fall uh, party, festival type thing, and at the end of it, there's going to be a trunk or treat. We're not promoting that necessarily, because here's the reason why, it's because KBC is its own deal. But our community groups are coming together and doing a, a, a trunk or treat for all of the KBC students that come that night, okay? It's an awesome opportunity for you to say, I have a family at work that would love to do something like this. And they, of course, bring their child. Um, I believe it starts at 6.30 um, that night, October the 25th. Again, awesome opportunity for you uh, to invite a new family with their friends to, or with their children to come. They drop their kids off, and then they can just bolt, okay? They can bolt and go run through cornfields or do whatever they want to do, all right? And then they come back at, um, I think, at 8 o'clock, and then we have this big trunk or treat set up by all of our community groups here at the church. Man, I'm so proud of our community groups. We're going to have about 20, I think, cars that will be giving out candy and decorated and stuff like that. So, again, why is this important? Because it's an opportunity for you to say, I have a neighbor that I think would really love this. I think their kids would love it. I have someone at my work that would really love this, and I want them to come. That is on October 25th. Um, it's a Wednesday night, so put that in your calendars right now, okay?